So guys, today we will be studying about firearm wounds. Okay. So what are firearm wounds? So first of all, what is a firearm? Firearm is an instrument or device which is possible propelling the projectile by means of expansile force of gases okay that is generated by the combustion of explosive substance and that explosive substance in case of firearm is gunpowder okay so this gunpowder is having the potential energy which is getting converted into kinetic energy and this kinetic energy is responsible for propelling the projectile that's why the one type of energy is getting converted into another that's why is if it's a thermodynamic device so firearm is a thermodynamic device which converts the potential energy of gunpowder into kinetic as a result of combustion of gases now the wounds the firearm wounds are basically special form of trauma that is as a result of bullet or short discharge through the body and that can cause breach through the body of a person so firearm wounds are also related to firearm injuries we'll discuss these wounds in detail now what is ballistics ballistics is basically the knowledge of physical force acting on the projectile or any missile it's a basically the simplified version is that it is the science of motion of projectile motion of projectile in the air motion in the barrel motion in the tissues and all so that's why we can further classify the ballistics into interior ballistics exterior ballistics terminal ballistics and wound ballistics so what is interior ballistics it's basically the study of projectile in weapon inside the barrel exterior ballistics is the study of projectile in the air what is terminal ballistics is the study of projectile penetration of solid and what is wound ballistics is the study of projectile penetration of the tissues so this is internal ballistics whatever is happening inside the barrel inside the firearm is the interior internal ballistics whatever happening in the air before striking the target or the tissues it is known as external ballistics now what is happening after striking the target or the soft tissues or the body that is known as terminal ballistics or wound ballistics now the firearm designs okay so firearm design basically are this is the barrel and this is the action and this is the grip okay three parts are there similarly in this firearm this is the action part this is the grip or buttstock or this is the barrel of firearm so these are the different parts of firearm now classification of firearm is basically can be done on the basis of barrel barrel is a basically steel tubing it's having two ends so this is the barrel which having two ends this is the muzzle end and this is the breech end and uh, we can classify based on the the barrel or based on the condition of bore whether it is a smooth or rifled okay so this is the smooth bore firearm which is having the barrel like this without any spiraling or rifling inside the barrel now rifled barrel is having these kind of characteristic spiraling or rifling and characteristic lands and grooves inside the barrel this is rifled firearm now what happens in smooth bore firearm because of this wide muzzle end there are chances of fanning out of shoots so just to decrease this fanning out of shoot the terminal narrowing will be seen in shotgun and this is known as choking choked shotgun wound the terminal narrowing is responsible for decreasing the fanning out of shot so this is the smooth bore firearm you can see the barrel is smooth inside the barrel the surface is very smooth and this is the rifled uh, barrel which is having the lands this prominent area this this one is land and these uh, depressed areas are grooves okay so this is the picture of uh, inside the barrel of a rifled firearm which is having spiraling lands and grooves in the barrel of rifled firearm so you can see this is gyroscope okay gyroscope is working on a principle that if you will provide the rounding motion to to any an instrument or any device it will move straight 
okay so that's why the similar mechanism like this is the rifle firearm uh, barrel and it's the bullet is moving like this so because of this these spiraling moment this bullet will travel along the path straight way along the path but if there is no rifling inside the barrel there are chances of tumbling or moving the bullet and not traveling along the straight trajectory now what is caliber of firearm in case of shotgun shotgun caliber can be determined by the ball one lb lead ball can be divided into how many similar size lead ball it is the caliber of smooth bore firearm like 12 small lead balls can be prepared so the caliber or the gauge of this shotgun is 12 gauge measure what is the caliber in rifled firearm as we have discussed these are the lens these are the grooves so distance between this this diameter the distance between two lens is known as caliber of rifled firearm shotgun cartridge there are different discs to keep the shoot as well as other substance in place this is the bed and this is gunpowder and this is detonator of the primer over there <clears throat> this bed acts as a piston it moves like this and it is responsible for propelling these pellets out, uh, out of this cartridge because of the effect of gases because of burning of gunpowder the explosive gases will be produced and they are pushing this wad outside uh, this cartridge case and thus they are uh, further pushing this uh, these pellets out of this cartridge now what is primer primer is is major uh, made up of lead stiffnet barium nitrate and antimony sulfide usually these three are present less common elements like aluminium sulfur tin calcium potassium chlorine and silicons are also there primer elements may be easier to detect in residue because they do not get hot as the powder and compounds may be detectable so these primer residues these are mostly metals they can be detected in gunpowder residue as compared to the gunpowder now primer can be centrifugal like this or can be rim fire like this so these are different type of uh, the primer location now what is gunpowder gunpowder is the classical gunpowder that is the black gunpowder that is having potassium nitrate or saltpeter 75% potassium nitrate is there 15% charcoal and sulfur is 10% so this is the ratio of black gunpowder 75 plus 15 plus 10 charcoal is a fuel and potassium nitrate is the oxygen supplier and it gives this mixture this mixture more density and readily ignitable it makes this mixture okay and it's acting as a oxygen supplier this nitrate is acting as a oxygen supplier this is the black gunpowder it this powder was creating so much blackening that's why there are new uh, smokeless gunpowders they can be single based like nitrocellulose double based like nitrocellulose and nitroglycerin and can be triple based propylene gunpowders like nitrocellulose nitroglycerin and crystalline nitroguanidine can be there these are triple based propylene powders so what is happening basically the primer ignites because of striking of the striking pin it is causing powder charge burn and thus there is increase in temperature production of gases chamber pressure increases because of production of gases blood uh, bullet or shoot charge moves out and bullet or shoot charge comes out of the barrel and chamber pressure reduces to zero so this is the chain of event events that is usually seen in case of now there are different gases can be carbon dioxide can be carbon monoxide nitrogen sulfurated hydrogen can be produced in inside the barrel now another <coughs> pictorial diagram that showing hammer is striking at the base of cartridge that is igniting the primer that detonates and further igniting the gunpowder and thus it is creating a back pressure 
due to release of gases and the soot powder will uh, this shoot particle or the pellets will come out of the barrel of the gun so this is the mechanism of firearm